Okay, we're going to talk about Safari Land's uh, single point harness for M4 rifles, although they can be adapted for a number of different rifles. But as you get the kit, you'll have uh, the, the harness strap, whether it has a pad or not, is an additional item that you can buy. Um, it comes in several configurations, but the key to it is is the nylon adjustable harness part that it, that is coupled to to this uh, locking device. Now, the locking device is made up of a male unit that looks like this. It has a male plug and a receiver unit that just pushes in. To release it, all you do is pull back on the ring and you basically have to pull it straight back in order to make it release. Now, this device also has a safety mechanism. So if I turn it out of that open notch, it's no longer in the notch, then I cannot release the part. I have to bring it back to the neutral position in order to be able to release this. And again, you have to take a pull the unit straight back in order to release it. Um, you can actually turn this thing 180 degrees and it drops into another lock and now it's a safety for the safety. It prevents this thing from turning, although very seldom do we ever need it to do that. Now we're going to show you how to connect the adapter to the M4 rifle. It requires no special tools and you don't have to be a gunsmith and you don't have to do anything special to the rifle. The adapter is made up of a wedge device and the wedge device has a little male unit that goes forward. So this unit goes uh, the forward direction on the rifle and you need to determine that so that you know whether or not to put the connector on the right side or the left side. If you're shooting off the right side of your shoulder you want to connect to the left side. Now it's easier to do that before you mount it on the rifle so I'm just going to take the male unit and it comes with one end already has a knot in it. Of course if you have to make your own it's not a big deal. You just use regular nylon cord, tie a knot and put it in. and. Uh, I'll push it back out again so you can see what it looks like. So it just has a simple knot that's going to pull inside of that. Now since we're going to make this up for a right-handed shooter, we're going to just take and put the line through the side, just like this. Bring it back down through and out through the open hole. Now this is what's important. Make sure that that knot is feeded back in there and tightened up because we want to get this as tight as we can, as close as we can. Now this dimension that we're setting up right here is different for other weapon systems. So if you're going to put it on a shotgun, you'd probably want this about a two inch. But working off of the AR-15, M16, M4 system, we want this as close as we can get. So once we get that pretty close, we're going to tie another knot and we're going to work that knot as close as we can to the inside. So keeping the loop fairly big, I want to simply take and work that knot down as much as I can and actually try to get it inside if I can, inside of that position. So once I get the knot, pull it up snug, <clears throat> then you can go ahead and cut it. You want to try to cut it relatively close to the knot so that we don't have a lot of extra room left over. And then you want to take that loose fray and burn it. And you want to burn it until it gets like a mushroom knob on it. A lot of times what I'll do is once I get it hot I'll just actually create a mushroom by pushing it like that. That prevents the knot from ever working loose. So now you have the part ready to put on your rifle. <clears throat> so now if you take a regular Phillips head screwdriver even on a Leatherman tool you have to remove the screw entirely. So once the screw is out this is the locking wedge, and this is the key part to the rifle that will lock it up. And actually, you can see it has some teeth that mate into the threaded part up by the castle nut that goes from the receiver of the rifle to the stock of the rifle. We'll need to remove the stock. Most of these have a simple mechanism. You just pull back and slide it off. Now, the second thing that you'll do is this male unit that we talked about it actually fits in a receiver part of the rifle just like this so in order to put it in place you can set it up make sure that it's lined up and pressed in and that's what that part needs to look like now this adapter has a flanged area and of course the flanged area is going to go over the castle nut so we take and line this part up just like this and simply slip it over and you can spread it out just slightly to capture that wedge device. And once you've got it captured, 
you'll take and replace your screw and the key to this is do not over tighten it all it does is keep the wedge in place so you don't have to get a, a lot of torque on it I just simply tighten the thing up and make sure that it's just snug the Leatherman tool is fine it's snug we don't have to bear down on it and now you have that part of it attached you can re put the uh, your movable buttstock back in position now <coughs> On most of the rifles you can position this all the way up against that if you're trying to collapse the stock or bring it out. But now this is what it'll, it'll actually look like. It's out of the way of the shooting, it's out of the way of your safety. And then the next part is the harness itself. <clears throat> we take and put the harness so that the, the, the uh, safety mechanism is up. So if I'm a right-handed shooter, I'll put it over my right arm, right shoulder, and I'll bring it up and again you want to adjust this no matter what your body armor is or what your way your kit is you'll adjust this strap so that it hangs just about in front of your sternum and of course uh, you'll have to adjust it out it has a quick adjustment as well as a quick release uh, buckle here so you can take it off and adjust it pretty quickly but the final situation will be so that you can actually take and line it up and snap it in and the rifle needs to be so that you have enough room that you can bring the rifle up with the stock extended with your body armor on without snagging your gear you need to be able to bring the rifle up in a shooting position at the same token you need to be able to drop the rifle down in a down position and have free access to your handguns it does allow you in a position here and the way we take and transfer the shoulders is so you simply kick the stock up and over so I could just stock up and over to swap shoulders also if you're going to take and put it to your back you simply take the, the weapon and just slide it to the back position now once it's to the back position it's anchored it's locked there you can walk with it run with it so forth to get it back out in a shooting position just grab the grip of the weapon and swing the weapon around and it's back into the shooting position you can shoot in all the positions without making any adjustments. If I need to go prone, I simply push out against the harness, go prone, pull the rifle back in, and I'm ready to shoot. You can also, the harness is not in the way when you're trying to shoot position shooting, such as kneeling or sitting positions. To get out of it, all you simply do is just release the ring. If you've got the ring in a safety mode, you'll have to turn the ring back to the neutral position. It allows you to get in and out of the weapon system very quickly. If I have to take and set the rifle aside, I can set the rifle aside. If I need the rifle, I can uh, have immediate access to it. The device is designed so that if you're entangled, uh, you can break away from the system right around 150 pounds. So if with 150 pounds of pull, it doesn't damage the system, but it'll, it'll uh, unsnap and pop out of place in case you should ever become entangled of what we call fatal entanglement. So that's the, the rifle system with the uh, single point harness and this is easy to adapt to. Uh, we have rings adapted for shotguns, uh, we have them for other rifles, we actually have a system that goes on the old M16 rifle if you want to make a simple uh, single adapter. Many of the H and K products already have a ring down here as well as the FN products. Many of them have a loop and all you have to do is tie your regular line. If you'll notice, there are no metal to metal, there's no metal clanking. In fact, there's, uh, there's little or no metal in the whole system at all. So we don't have the metal to metal clank, as well as we don't have something that's obtrusive in the, in the firing mechanism when you have it disconnected. Okay.